So, didn't realize it started. Here we go. Graphing a quadratic equation. <clears throat> so let's uh, get one up here. x squared minus 2x minus 8 equals y. So this is a quadratic because, um, or uh, second order, second degree equation. Um, typically you'd see it written the other way around. It doesn't matter. We're going to, uh, we're going to take... Um, the idea of x and y, there are multiple ways to do this, but one way is to take the idea of uh, x and y intercepts and use that information to plot points and graph, etc. So uh, if you recall, let's pause. Tell me, you know, think to yourself, which if, if y is equal to 0, which intercept is that? And if x is equal to 0, which intercept is this one? And hopefully you paused and waited, or you thought about it, and here we are. Uh, this, of course, when y is equal to 0, this is the x-intercept. And when x is equal to 0, that is the y-intercept. doesn't matter so much other than in conversation and uh, understand, you know, sounding like you know what you're talking about. Uh, because you're going to get a value for this, and you're going to plot the point or points, and you're going to get a, zero for, uh, a value for this and plot the points or point. So let's go ahead and take care of this guy first. Uh, right here, and we'll go ahead and put 0 in for y. This is the more complex situation, and you're going to have to recall how to do some uh, some work from previous. How do we how do we solve this? Um, note, if I subtract, if I added 2x to both sides so I could get this term by itself, or isolate this term, however you want to think of it, um, I would have, uh, let's add that as well, and have uh, 2x plus 8. I'm still, if I take the square root, this is going to be stuck under there, and it, it's just not, not a great way to do this. Um, so what we want to do is we want to, uh, there's, a, there's a whole number of, a litany of things that you can try. This particular one we can factor. Hopefully you've already been thinking about it and wondering why I'm taking so long. So when I'm factoring it, I'm going to factor this trinomial because it is the product of two binomials in this case. And I'm going to figure out what two binomials will, when I multiply them together, will equal this trinomial. How I do that and how many of us do that is we take a look at this term and we understand that this term is the product of this value and this value. And we certainly know that that is x and x because this is the product of the first terms of each binomial. So this one is the product of the second terms of each of the binomials. So values of negative 8 that add up to, because we, we understand or hopefully recall, that this coefficient is the sum of these two. And we'll do some mechanics in class if we need to. Uh, I mean, if we need to review, we can do it uh, during office hours. So if you need to go through all the different uh, products of, uh, or factors of negative 8, uh, you have negative 1 and 8, you have 1 and negative 8, etc, etc. Which of these you'd have to go through would equal uh, or sum to negative 2? So you should pause and think about that for a second. And well, I erase. And of course you should come up with what positive, uh, positive, excuse me, negative 4 and positive 2. Right? Those two numbers multiply, or multiply together to become negative 8, or the product of those two numbers is negative 8. And the sum of those two numbers is negative 2. So let's clean that up down here. Oops, this was supposed to be a 0. Um, we get x plus 2 and x minus 4. Now if we want to double check that that, in fact, is the correct answer, we would distribute x squared minus 4x plus 2x, negative 8, equals 0. Now, when I talk about this coefficient being the sum of the two terms here and here, uh, let's, let's add these but not add them. x squared, and let's, uh, for these two values, or these two terms, excuse me, let's factor the x out. We did that in a previous video. So this is going to be plus x times negative 4 plus 2. Uh, let's go back to the red. 
minus 8 equals 0. So notice that these two numbers will sum together and they come from these two numbers. Okay, let's just highlight these two numbers. And there they are, the sum. And so you get x squared minus 2x minus 8 equals 0. So now let's go back and do the problem that we we're talking about. So now that we have these factors, these guys right here, uh, x minus 2, x, excuse me, that was x plus 2, x minus 4 equals 0. Now, what this factoring does is it creates um, independent factors. And this is key. The factoring of that and the fact that this is 0 creates a situation where we have independent factors, meaning that at a certain point, I don't care what that equals. As long as this one equals, uh, equals 0, then the whole left-hand side will equal 0. So we can determine when that equals 0 by doing this. And then we can do it separately for this guy. When is that going to equal 0? Because if this equals 0, I don't care what happens to this. So then we get x equals negative 2. So those are our x-intercepts. Yes, there are two x-intercepts. Uh, 4, 0, and negative 2, 0. We're going to plot those in a second. Then we have the other situation where we want uh, the y-intercepts where x is equal to 0. And that one's quite, quite a bit easier. What was our equation again? x squared minus 2x. x squared minus 2x minus 8 equals y. This time I'm putting uh, 0 in for x to figure out what this y is that maps to it. 0 squared minus 2 times 0 minus 8 equals, neg equals y. So these two terms equal 0 and I get y equals negative 8. So our y-intercept is 0 negative 8. Yeah, did I say that right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so now let's go ahead and graph that. Graph these three points. Let's make this fairly nice. And do this guy up pretty nicely as well, or try to. And I'm afraid I might, maybe I'm not talking to the mic. I was sitting there resting my hand on my, or my face on my hand. So I got a point zero, negative eight. Let's change some colors. Zero, negative eight. Zero for x, negative eight for y. That's four, and that's eight. That's the point zero, negative eight. And then we have the points, and I don't remember them, negative two, zero, four, zero. Negative two, zero is here. And four, zero is here. Hopefully you're recalling from days before that this is a parabola. And so if this was a parabola, do you think it opens up or do you think it opens down? And I'm going to try to sketch this in with just dotted values like this. Now, someone would be tempted to make that the vertex, and it's just not. And we'll talk about that in a second. Um, so it's going to look something like that. How do I know that that's not the vertex? Well, remember that um, a parabola has symmetry. And I think we determined that that one kind of stinks. We already have green. Let's go blue. Um, a parabola has symmetry. So look at the distance between these two points, the two x-intercepts. That distance. If a parabola has symmetry, then the line of symmetry should be halfway between those two points. Here's 3 and 3, distance of 3 that way and a distance of 3 this way. So my line of symmetry for the parabola is going to be here, which tells me that the uh, vertex is going to be on that line of symmetry. And that's why I sort of know that it's going to be here. Uh, this point, this point, and these guys. You could also do a t-chart and plot a whole bunch of points, right? So if you wanted to figure out the exact value, because it might not be a pretty... Uh, pretty point or pretty value where that's an integer, you would want to put in x equals 1 and figure out the y that maps to it to find the exact value of that point. That's it. It's already too long. Bye.